Right now I am at the All British Field Meet in Portland, Oregon. This year's featured mark is Land Rover and behind me and also in front of me is a huge field of Land Rovers. There will be almost 800 cars today. We better get out there and take a look at the field. Let's get started. Looks like the first group of cars is the Land Rover Discoveries and this is by far the most Land Rover Discoveries I've ever seen in my life. But, uh... There is a G4 Challenge Land Rover Discovery here. You can see this is equipped from the G4 Challenge. Has a winch and lights on the front as well as a roof rack. This one is right hand drive. It looks like they use this as an overlanding vehicle. They have a fridge in the back and this nice little canopy as well as a snorkel on the side. Next up is a series Land Rover that has an LS V8 put under the bonnet. Uh, what I did is, this is hot rod. This is basically, it's a factory Rover hydraulic winch, but I put a gear reduction planetary hydraulic motor on it that's rated at 380 foot pounds of torque. Gear reduction. You'd never know from the inside, they've kept all the instrumentation pretty stock. Next up is a group of Range Rovers. This one has a tent on the top. There's some more modern Land Rovers down there, but I don't think we need to cover those. Next, we have a little hot rod. This series Land Rover also has a Chevrolet V8 under the bonnet. You can see it's been lowered quite a bit. It's another Land Rover next to it. That's the height that it should be sitting at. And look at it now. And we have a bunch of door mobiles. I've never seen this many in one place. This is a pretty amazing display of the original camping Land Rovers. The insides of these, they had little cupboards, little cooking area, got a stove, tiny little sink in there. There's another one, the configuration is opposite of that last one. Now we're moving on to the military Land Rovers. There's three forward controls here. This is an ex-Canadian military Land Rover. This is in Wolf spec. It is a 300 TDI. This one is that weird military Series 3. I think these forward controls are really neat. They're a little bit bigger than my Penzgauer. Another Wolf Spec Land Rover. And this forward control is much larger than the other two that are here. Yeah, it's underneath. These have massive 12 R20 tires, so that's a 20 inch wheel. We have some modern Defenders, as well as some older ones.
This one has a camping setup. Now a huge row of series Land Rovers. Check out this display with the two series Land Rovers and the Defender. This one has fresh aluminum panels on it. This is a 1951. Not many amenities on the original Land Rovers. This one came down from Canada for the show. Here's a Land Rover coming back from the grave. The Land Rovers just go on for days here. This one is very well outfitted. Now we're moving into the Jaguar classes. Here are some XJSs. Now we have the E-Type class. Next class is the early XKs, the 120s, 40s, and 50s. There's a couple 120 coupes. This is a replica Jaguar SS. This was built by Stedman. We're back to more XKs. Now we have the XJs. A 
and there's it's more modern Jags down there, but we don't need to walk down there. There's also a big group of XKs as well as the new F-types. Next we have a Vauxhall Valix. This used the six cylinder for from the Ford Zephyr. And an Austin FX4 London taxi cab. I used to have one of these. This one is the diesel version. I had the petrol version of this car. And we have a Daimler SP250. This has the little 2.5 liter Daimler V8. Next to that is a Gilburn GT. This Gilburn has a MGB engine under the bonnet. Then we have an Austin Cambridge. And a little Lotus Super 7. And we have a couple Austin A40s. This one has a 1.6 liter Ford Kent engine in it. It's a little bit of a hot rod with wire wheels. And the one next to it has a V8 shoved under the bonnet. This one is a Ford V8. The distributor is in the front. Then we have a couple TVR 2500Ms. <laughs> then we move on to the Aston Martins. This one is a 2.4, one of my favorite Aston Martins of all time. Next to that is a DB2 Mark III. Then we've got a DB4. Next to that, a Bentley. I had one the same color as this. Down here is something very special. This is a three liter Bentley. Then we move on to the Rolls Royces. This is a Silver Cloud. And we have a Wraith. Then we've got a Jensen Interceptor Convertible. There was about 500 of these ever made. My friend Brian owns this car. I restored this car quite a number of years ago. And we took this car on the driving tour yesterday. Next we have a Morris Minor pickup race car. We have an A-series engine with dual carburetors. And next we have a Ford Escort. And a Morris Mini race car. This must be a race car class because there are other classes that these cars would fit into. Now we've got the Sunbeam Tiger class. It's a nice Mark I. Here's a 1A. One of the biggest differences between these cars on the 1A, you need a soft tonneau cover to cover the har the soft top when it's down. Whereas on the Mark I Tigers, they have this hard cover that will cover the top when it's down, making it a true roadster. A couple more Tigers. That one is very modified. More Tiger. This one is displaying its STOA certificate. For Sunbeam Tigers, it's always good to get it certified as a real Tiger because it is easy to clone an Alpine into a Tiger, but there are ways to tell if you've done that. You want to make sure that if you are buying a Tiger that you are buying a real Tiger. Then we have a couple Sunbeam Alpines. Both of these are Series 5s. These would have the 1725cc inline four engine. And then we have a couple beautiful Sunbeam Alpine Talbot Roadsters. I had one of the Talbot Coupes, which is the non-convertible version of this. Next class, we have an Austin America and an MG 1100. Looks like this MG 1100 has a Honda 16 valve engine installed. The radiator has been moved out to the exterior of the car. Something going on with the suspension on this car as the track is a lot wider. Is this your car? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a, um, it's a body swap. It's a 64 MG 1100. Uh, it had been in a barn since the late 60s, and then, um, yeah, I 
I cut out the, the bottom of it, and it's uh, it's all Honda Civic. Okay. Right there. Yeah. You know, the front suspension, front uh, subframe, firewall, the floor, rear subframe. Okay, so I knew something was up with the suspension here, and that's because the whole chassis is actually from another car, and the MG1100 body's just been set onto it. On the inside, you can see things lined up to about where they need to be. You can access the pedals, the seats are about in the right spot. Shifter is much further back than normal. I'm sure this car is way more reliable than an MG1100. And Jesse has his own YouTube, so if you want to find out more information about this car, it is Car Stuff PNW for Pacific Northwest. And as you can see, the filler for the fuel filler has been changed because uh, he's probably using the stock fuel tank. And now he has to open the boot in order to put his petrol in. It's hard to tell what's going on here, but I think this is the floor to the chassis that he grafted it on. And you can see where the body has been uh, welded or smooched. Yep. Yep. Yeah, Those are welds? Yep, yep. It's okay. all welded up in here and on the inside as well. So you can see the seat structure for the rear seat is actually sitting above the chassis for the other car. There's a an air gap down there. Yeah. Now we've got a Morgan Plus 4. And next a Morgan 4-4. And we have a modern Morgan three-wheeler. Another Morgan 4-4. And another Morgan 4-4. Looks like we have a class of Morris's next. This is a Morris 8. Little tiny flathead engine in there. And we have some Morris Minor Traveler wagons. This one has a Chevrolet V8 under the bonnet. <laughs> After the Travelers, we have a coupe and a bunch of convertibles. Here's a little Morris Minor pickup truck. Another coupe. A convertible. Another Traveler. And another convertible. The Morris Minor Club is here in attendance. This one is an early split window Morris Minor. A couple more Lotus Super 7s and a couple Europas and an Elan. Next to that is a Ford Lotus Cortina, which has a twin cam Lotus engine. And then a Lotus Esprit. I'm kind of surprised that there's only one Esprit here today. And then we have four or more Elises here. This car's all about half. It's an Elise race car. And then you just hop in straight. Easier than The steering is in the center of this one. Oh yeah, and then this tops off, obviously. These are great, you see these? And we've got an Avora. Another Elise and another Avora. Looks like next up is the MG Midget class. Good. All of the ones we have passed by so far are powered by the Austin A Series engine. As we get down here to the rubber bumper car that has a Triumph Spitfire engine. So at this time, Austin and Triumph had merged together and they decided to put the Triumph engine into the MG Midget. Now we've got some MG TDs.
This one right here is the same color as mine. Next up is an MGTA. This one is supercharged. You see the dual exhaust running down the side of the car. Really neat stop lamp up there. And we have an MGF. These were never sold here in America. And then a Magnet. An MGA Mark II. An MGTA. An MGA. And another Magnet. Next class is all MGTCs. And we have three MGTFs. So these are the T-Series that are moving more towards the MGA. This is the last of the T-Series MGs. Next class is MGBs. This is a MGB V8 GT. And we have an MGC GT. Another MGB that someone has put a V8 into. Another MGC GT. So this has the three liter inline six cylinder. We have another MGC convertible. Another one next to that. And we have an MGB with a V8. So it looks like all these cars are either V8 or Cs. Another MGC convertible. An MGB with a V8. And it looks like this one might be a real MGB GT V8. So that last class I was looking at were only V8s and the MGCs. So here are the MGBs. A lot of rubber bumper MGBs showed up today. Next class is MGAs. If you are competing in a car show, a lot of people do not like voting for cars that have their bonnets shut. So you can't see the condition of the engine. So if you do want to win a popular vote, maybe open up your bonnet. Here's another group of MGAs. And we have some MGA coupes. It looks like the last MGB class was just roadsters because here is the MGB GTs. The signs for the classes are not labeled, so I'm not sure what I'm going to see in the class and still I've walked through and seen what kind of cars are there. This B has a strut kit on it that allows the bonnet to open much further than you can have it open with the prop rod.
for somebody This B has a twin cam engine. The owner's not here, but I think this is a Mazda Miata engine. It has individual throttle body injection on it. Now we have a group of older MGB Roadsters. The first group that I went through were newer MGBs, so they must have had a year cut off between these two classes. Unless, unless it's modified to the hilt, and I don't mean just with, I don't mean modified MGB engine, I mean like a modified and splits. Here's another engine swapped MGB. This one has a Ford. I think this is the Ford Duratec engine. This one still maintains its original American smog pump setup. This looks like a class of Triumph TR250s. There may be a 5 sitting in here as well, but 5s were never sold here in the United States, so these are probably all carbureted versions called the TR250. These have the Triumph TR4 bodies, but they do have the 6-cylinder from the TR6. Now we have a group of Triumph Spitfires. This one is an earlier Mark II model. You can see the differences. Then the next class, we have Triumph TR8s. These have V8s in them. This one here is a TR7, so this would have a four cylinder instead of a V8. And next up we have Triumph Stags. These have V8s in them. They are a different V8 than the TR8 used. These are essentially two TR7 engines put together. However, it looks like someone has fitted this one with a TR6 engine. It has triple fuel injected throttle bodies, it looks like. So this would be the setup that you would find on a TR5. This blue stag has the bonnet open and we can see the original Triumph V8 powered by dual Stromberg carburetors. Next class is Triumph TR6s. These of course use an inline Triumph six cylinder. And next here we have a Triumph 10. This one is left-hand drive. This is a pretty rare car here in the United States. If a, if a bunch of these did come to the United States, they probably ended up in the Crusher a long time ago. Then next to it is a Triumph Vitesse. So this is a six cylinder version of the Triumph Herald. We have some more Triumph TR6s over here.
Now we have some Triumph GT6s. This is a coupe version of the Triumph Spitfire. However, these have six cylinder engines instead of four cylinder engines that the Spitfires have. This is a different engine than the TR6s use. This is a smaller six cylinder. Next class is Triumph TR4s. Okay, yeah. These are all later fours. You can see the spires down the side of them. These would also have independent rear suspension. Then we have Triumph TR3s. This is what they call a small mouth TR3. You can see the grill is much smaller than this three next to it. That is the same grill that the Triumph TR2s used. We have a class full of bug-eyed sprites. These are all the original series of the Sprite before they went to the box shape that was shared with the MG Midget. Only one of these cars has the bonnet up and the bonnet has been modified to open the opposite direction. So this is the wrong way for a bug eye bonnet to open. Down here on the end is a bug eye with a lot of patina. It's, like it's not rusting through though, so why paint it? Perfectly usable as is. Next up is the Jensen Healy class. These cars use Lotus twin cam engines. They are on a slant. These use dual Stromberg carburetors. I've had a few of these I did convert my last one to dual Delardo carbs, which are a lot more reliable than these Strombergs. Now we have the next generation of the Austin Healey Sprite. This is the box Sprite. Starting with the Mark II Austin Healey Sprites, they shared the same bodywork as the MG Midget. However, the grills and the badges were different. Now we have some Austin Healey 3000s. Then here are some Austin Healey 100s. This one has the Lubert Lamas style bonnet on it. It does not have the air box or other performance options. It does have the fold down windshield though. I have a couple more. This one also has the louvered bonnet. And this is a 100S. And you see the special air box over there. The intake and exhaust are on the other sides of this engine. These cars had louvered seats in them. This one is right hand drive. Now we have Austin Healey 106s, and actually this is a Nash Healey next to it. And we have another 106, some more Austin Healey 3000s. Six for six. This one is sanded down to bare metal. They probably put a clear coat over it to protect it. Now we're getting into the mini class. These will be minis over the entire production line of the classic minis. Production of the classic mini ran all the way from 1959 until 2000. So these are going to be over a long period of years. 
Next we have some Traveler Woody Wagons. And here we have a panel van. This one is a Clubman. A lot more sedans. Now here's a mini convertible. These convertibles were not made originally as convertibles. A coach belt company took the sedans and turned them into convertibles. That's got still passes. And we have a mini pickup truck. This is the same color as mine was originally. And back to sedans. I hear a bagpipe off in the distance. There's where the sound is coming from. I mean, just the idea of tuning that carburetor with the back. And we have a mini milk. And then a Ranger Cub. I've said that these look like a Marcos Mini Marcos on the front. This one is right hand drive. But here in the rear, there is only one tire. Next to that is another mini moke. And another one next to that. And here we have one of the more modern Innocenti minis. You got rid of it? And you got a Fiat 124 Spider with 36,000 miles. This is a very cool Innocenti mini. This is actually a Dutch market car. So you can see on the tag, this was built by Leyland Industries in Belgium. So this has a 1275 under the bonnet. However, Innogenti completely designed this car. None of the other minis look anything like this. This looks more like a Fiat or an Auto Bianchi. It says left-hand drive, of course. Take a look at the wild dashboard in this car. Not gonna see another mini like this. There's we have a spometer in the shape of a C here, the tachometer on the other side. So this is a more modern A-series powered car. How neat is this? This hatch setup is completely different from other minis as well. The rear seat does fold down, so you have a huge cargo area in the back. Very rare, very neat car. The owner put the bonnet down so we could check out what this thing looks like. I'm sure I will never see another one of these. Next class is Modern Minis. Again, we don't need to go and look through them. This company is called Vintage Underground. They are building electric converted British cars. They have an E-Type and a Mini here. This is one of the new Defender Trophy editions for this year. Last year, my Land Rover was the Trophy edition, and this year they are doing a 130 edition. So the long wheelbase is the Trophy edition for this year. This is the Trophy edition for the year before mine. This is the four door version, and the bonnet is painted black, whereas on my two-door version, the bonnet is painted white. This one has a few things added to it. It has these limb risers and the light bar on the top. That is from Proud Rhino. Here we have a Mini Cooper made up to look like the Patty Hopkirk car. 
actually have a set of original Patty Hopkirk seats for a Mini that I need to put into one of my cars. What number is it? should say. There should be a number. Next to that is a Mini Moke. This one has a turbocharger on it. That would be pretty crazy in a Moke. Never felt that I needed to go even faster in mine. All these minis here are turbocharged. So it must be a specialty of this outfit. There's some of their turbo kits for minis. They get quite expensive as you move to the back there, $5,700. I had a great time today at the all british field meet here in portland i hope you enjoyed looking around at the vehicles with me if you want to see more videos like this comment below and click subscribe